Hi everyone, Coda here, and welcome to the Express Release Technique with a beautiful view. What you're about to learn today, and what I'm gonna walk you step by step through, is the routine that's helped thousands of students just like you be able to effectively and quickly turn off their sciatic flare up from anywhere in very short amount of time. So let's go. So I'm gonna have you grab your percussion gun and you're going to wanna use the flat head attachment first. This is gonna be our warm up. Now turn the gun on and then I want you to um, put it on level two. That's gonna be about 40 percussions per second, which our whole goal here is warming up the tissues, oxidizing the muscles and getting blood flow. So you're gonna hold your percussion gun upside down by the barrel, okay? And then you're gonna allow that handle to just gently rest on your arm. This is gonna be a really comfortable position for your standing express routine. You're gonna to wanna to get a chair or a wall, something to help with balance and stability. So your first step is gonna to be to take your percussion gun and start to run it vertically along your glutes. And we're gonna take about 30 seconds here to just really get this area warmed up. And the whole goal of trigger point release is effectively releasing the trigger points that are causing a lot of referral pain, sensations down our leg, up into the lower back, and really all around our hip and gluteal region. So we're gonna be able to find those hot buttons and effectively turn them off. So keep going vertically up your gluteus maximus and then come over to the side around that ball socket. You're gonna feel a little a bone, a bony area in here. You wanna go circular motions around it. Fabulous. And now turn off the gun and I want you to find your fork attachment. We're gonna swap them out this fork attachment is gonna be exactly what you'll need to access the deeper layers of muscular tissue that are in the glutes. There are about six to seven layers of muscles on top of one another. So with this one, we're gonna get a lot more targeted. So you're gonna turn the gun to level two again. And the first thing I'd like you to do is start with some vertical strokes right on your gluteus maximus. And I want you to find any areas that feel a little sensitive, that feel a little hard to the touch. And when you find those trigger points, you want to just gently ease into it. You don't want to dig in and essentially torture yourself. You just want to be mindful of your pain threshold and go right up to it. This is about respecting your body's natural pain signals rather than violating and pushing through them. A lot of times that can be really counterproductive for lasting relief. Once you find an area, you're gonna remove the gun, kick your leg up, hold it. So what we're doing is we're flexing this muscle right here. And then we're gonna slowly relax together for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fabulous job. And then again, kick the leg up, hold it. And you wanna make sure you're flexing this. You feel this muscle flexing and slowly begin to release the tension for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. And then we're gonna go one more time. Kick the leg back, hold the gun right around those sensitive areas. They should be a little less sensitive right now. And slowly relax. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And really allow all of that tension to just melt out of your muscle, nice and slowly. Now the next movement, we're gonna target our gluteus medius. So on the, 
on this movement is gonna be a side kick. So we're gonna do a lateral lift with our raise. Now, I want you to be mindful um, to not tweak or twist or kind of compensate. So you just wanna work within your range that's comfortable to maintain balance. So lift that leg up, hold it, and then you're gonna take your gun and place the percussion right above that ball socket, right in that area here. And then slowly relax. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. Another side kick up. Now we're gonna bring the gun a little lower, lower and to the side. Slowly release. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'll show you on my body. You want to be right about in here. The ball socket joints right here. You're going to be in a little bit. We're going to do one more movement, one more lateral kick. Hold it. And then slowly begin to relax. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Fantastic. Now the next thing we're going to do is an iliopsoas release. Um, this muscle, the psoas, is the only muscle group that connects your upper body and your lower body. So it does sustain a lot of stress and tension when we sit, when we drive, it maintains a lot of contracture in that region. So right in here, you're going to find your hip bone and go right inside of it. And what we're going to do is hold on to your chair for balance, bring your knee up, about 90 degrees is fine, and then apply the percussion right on the inside of that hip bone. And then we're going to slowly bring our leg down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You can also do this lying on your back. This muscle is a direct functional pair to a lot of the muscles in the glutes. Typically, the glutes are overstretched, weak, and underworked, and these in the front are overworked and really tight. So in order to actually get lasting relief for the sciatic in the back, we've got to actually release these because they're actually connected and they're constantly playing tug of war. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna lift that knee up, hold it, and slowly begin to release. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastico. Now we're gonna do this one more time, and we're gonna move the gun up our hip bone. So follow that crest all the way up, situate it right in here. Okay, right, right at the top. You can even play with the angle. Kind of notice, because these are deep muscles. So you wanna, you can kind of angle it towards the hip bone. And you'll, you'll notice, when we're doing this movement, you'll notice that muscle, you'll feel the muscle moving under the gun. So bring that up into contraction. Hold the gun right there on the crest, and then slowly begin to relax. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. And you can repeat these two, three times each, depending on what you need. Now we're gonna move down below the hip bone here into this groin area. Find this little pocket right here below your hip bone, okay? And we're gonna lift that knee up again, hold it, and then slowly begin to relax. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. Now we're gonna scooch over a couple inches right in the pocket right here. And we're gonna actually do a raise again with our knee. You can angle it out. Kind of play around with the angles. You can angle it in. See what feels good for you. Your hip is a ball socket joint, 
So you do want to play with different angles to target different heads and the muscles. Everybody's trigger points are in slightly different areas, so you just want to listen to your body on where you might need this therapy. So go ahead and slowly relax. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. And I'll just kind of gently massage around your hip bone, finding any areas that are sensitive, that are tight, and just allow the gun to work into those areas for about 10 to 15 seconds. When you find some areas, you feel like there's some trigger points in there, we're going to introduce a gentle range of motion for the hip, the hip joint to open up. So you can just hold the gun, you can do gentle strokes up and down, whatever feels right. Bring that knee up, out to the side, opening that hip up, and then come down. And feel how good that feels. So just move slowly. And take a moment to feel grateful that we have the tools and the technology and the education to heal ourselves on our own terms. Fantastic job and come to a seat of rest. Now you're gonna hold your gun upside down and just give those glutes some love. You can do horizontal strokes for your piriformis muscle. And we're just cooling down, allowing the muscles to integrate the work that we just did. Fantastic job. tips about working with the progression gun. So when you hit a trigger point or an area that's really tight, you're going to feel the gun putter. It's called feedback and it's how we designed it. So that's essentially telling you that there is a hyper dense tissue there. And a lot of times if you accidentally bonk a bone with the gun, it'll kind of bounce or putter off. That's basically what it's doing when it's hitting a trigger point in your muscle. That fiber is just so bound up on itself that it's almost as dense as a bone would be. So in that case, what you want to do when the gun starts to kind of putter and give you feedback, you can ease up on the pressure on that a little bit. You can also change the angle up. So I'll show you where I have, I have a bit of a density. So I have a bit of density right in here. So when you find an area that's really dense where you have a trigger point and your gun starts to putter, what you can do is you can play with the angle, also the pressure and the motion of it. So you don't need to press harder. You can actually release some of the pressure. You can angle the gun slightly differently to target that trigger point at a different angle. And you can also integrate a little bit of gentle motion and movement right around that dense region. What that's going to do is it's going to flood that area very quickly with blood and oxygen. And that's going to help those muscle fibers to really release. The next tip when it comes to doing these movements is it's key to go as slowly and as smoothly as you possibly can. Over time, when we live in a state of imbalance, and dysfunction, muscular and skeletal dysfunction, 
our brain actually stops communicating correctly with our certain muscle groups. So they actually are in a state of atrophy and they're not really communicating very effectively. So when we're doing this slow movement with the percussion, what we're doing is we're opening up new highways, new pathways, neural pathways of communication, again, between the brain and the muscle. Essentially what we're doing is we're teaching our body how to move pain-free, how to move with fluidity and quality of movement, and how to move easily. We have to start by doing that very slowly. Just like how when our nervous systems are first developing, when we're babies, we learn how to crawl really slowly and kind of roll around and just starting to build those connections. And then you learn how to kind of walk and stumble around and then, then the speed comes later. But the key is to develop a quality of movement where you can easily move very slowly and fluidly through your motions. Now there's going to be points of these movements that are sticky, that feel like they're um, kind of ratcheting or you can't fully get a smooth motion. But with a little bit of practice, that will improve dramatically. Think of like second hands on a clock. A lot of times when I work with a patient, at first their movements are very jarred. They're very, it's hard to move slowly and fluidly. So it can kind of tick, tick, tick. But I want you to think about the old school clocks with a second hand that was just very fluid and just kind of moved all the way around the clock in one motion. That is a quality that you want to go for when developing your slow movements. Another tip with the express release technique is you're going to want to do two to four reps per movement. Essentially with the kickback, do two to four of those lateral two to four and then two to four of these as well now when it comes to these hip openers you can do as many reps as feels comfortable for you you don't want to go over 20 minutes of express because this is a really powerful therapy and you're treating deep muscles now if you do too much you can actually cause more inflammation and bruising and that's not gonna give you the lasting relief that you want and need. Now, when it comes to frequency throughout your day, we recommend starting with only one express release every day. You can work up to doing it a little bit more if you need to, but you shouldn't need to go over two times of express per day, especially when you're starting out. This is gonna work very quickly for you and you're gonna notice uh, a great reduction in pain and a greater increase in range of motion and, and usability and just quality of movement in general. And so you shouldn't need to use this very often, especially after you've started doing it and combining it with the other exercises and programs that we have.